What's up guys, ONG47 here, and today we're going to be talking about the number one question you might ask yourself on GT Online. What car should you buy? I found myself in the same predicament. You know, you ask yourself, what car should you buy for racing? You know, should you go buy the T20 or the Osiris or the Zentorno or the Turismo? And it's a very delicate question because you don't want to go buy the wrong car and then lose a quarter of the money that you spent to the game, you know, and lose your ass on it. So me and my friend, we decided to test all these cars that were supers and we have compiled nothing but backs and the results will shock you. Um, the car that won, I'm gonna go and tell you this right now, it's an underdog. Me and my friend were shocked by how good this car was. Um, and I just want to go out, go ahead and throw in a disclaimer. This is made specifically, this video here is made specifically for racing. If you're wanting a car that can survive bullets and RPGs, this video is not for you. This video is made specifically for racing to show what is the best race car. If you're wanting a car that can survive bullets and rockets and all that stuff, go buy an armored Karuma and go about your day. All right, this is for people who want a race car and want to make a quick buck. But anyway, moving on. So this chart that's popping up right now, um, I know people are going to be asking me in the comments, well, this is confusing. How does it work? Uh, so basically, there are 11 cars in the, 11 supercars in the game, and it was very difficult to try and test them all by using this graph. So instead, we just put 10 up against each other and we used elimination rounds and so elimination round number one what we did was we put the Adder and Cheetah up against each other and whichever one lost went up against the Voltic and whichever one lost against the Voltic was eliminated and so you see the Cheetah it was eliminated it lost against the Voltic and lost against the Adder and then we did the same thing with the Turismo Adder and Voltic in elimination round number two and you see the Voltic was eliminated. But anyway, I know this is kind of confusing, but it's, it got us proper and efficient results. And so that's what we use. But anyway, moving on, we're going to cover all the advantages and disadvantages of every car or every supercar that we tested in the game. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and say this. Um, this track, this is the track that we were testing the uh, cars on here. And I should this I should have put it in earlier, but I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, the way that this track was made, it pulled everything that the car had to offer out, and it brought it to the surface. You know, its braking power, its acceleration, its speed, its handling. You know, its suspension. Everything, everything that a race car needs to have. This track brought it out, like right here at this corner. I mean, look how hard you have to break in order to make this corner or you go into the wall. That tr that corner right there was perfect for testing your brakes. Um, anyway, so we, we as in me and my friend, we have probably put in maybe about, I'd say over 200 laps on this course. So we do know the track. We were hitting the apexes as you can see. We're over here just sliding through the... Uh, corners just apexing and we we may mess up a little bit but it wasn't because we didn't know the course it's because of the cars you know we might we may lose control sometimes we may goof and so we'd wait until the person caught back up so yeah um anyway moving on so the first car we're going to cover is the osiris so what are its disadvantages well, apart from it being absolutely hideous, that's my opinion, it is absolutely wild in the rear end. It is very difficult to control. It fishtails like crazy, and I dislike it. I think it is a huge waste of money. $2,500,000, that's the right price. Put it in the comments if I'm wrong. It's somewhere around there. Um, for a car that can get outran by, you know basically everything else. I mean, looking at the chart, I mean, the Osiris got beat out by the T20 on the starting races, and 
it was bad. Like right now, I'm racing my friend. He's driving the, the uh, Adder and I'm driving the Turismo R. And the Turismo R is stomping the Adder. If you think this is bad, the Osiris versus T20 was even worse. It was way worse. I mean, it was probably two times worse. I think I actually lapped the Osiris in the T20. Not kidding. Um, but anyway, but the one thing that the Osiris had is great acceleration. If you were able to control the car, <laughs> able is the key word here, if you were able to control the car going through a corner, when you came out of it, that's that thing shot like a rocket. Now, I don't have video footage of it because it got corrupted. I was going to add it to this video to show you, but it got corrupted, so <laughs> sorry. Um, and it would, it would be difficult to show the cars, you know, in all of their glory and disglory, you know, with only 30 minutes to use in the video. I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult. Anyway, um, moving on. So it had great acceleration. So that's its one advantage. It had one of the best acceleration times coming out of the corners. Um, you can probably put it up there with the Turismo, but you know if you can't control the car, acceleration doesn't mean a damn thing if you can't keep up because you keep losing control. Uh, so yeah, but like I said, it's the biggest waste of money I think, and two million five hundred thousand dollars. I mean that's just stupid. Um, next is in, is the Zentorno. Now you would think of. Uh, all-wheel drive car would be really good around corners no it's not actually I don't know why it's not but it's just strange I mean you have power going to all four wheels and for some reason it spun out and probably 65 percent of the corners it went into I can't explain it I don't know the physics of that I mean it just doesn't make sense to me I can't really explain it but you know the proof is there and I, I just can't explain it. I don't know why. It, it just does. Um, other than that, it's one of the fastest cars in the game. Everything else about it's good. It's it's a little bit slower than the than the T20, and a little slower, actually much slower than the uh, than the um, Osiris, which is strange. Um, And it's about equal with the adder. Acceleration's eh. Handling's eh. Braking's eh. So the car's alright. Um, the adder. Thing turns like a tank. It is a pain in the absolute ass to turn. It is such a chore to just turn this car. I mean, I think there's footage in this video of me driving the adder and I have to go so far to the left just to make it around this corner that's coming up. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, the car just turns so bad and it sounds like a giant fart in a can, to be perfectly honest. It sounds like someone is taking a fart, like someone's farting through a can. I'm sorry. That's what it sounds like. It sounds awful. Um. It has great brakes. The reason why it has great brakes is because the thing is heavy. I mean, the thing is probably one of the heaviest supercars in the game. I mean, it is heavy. It's big, it's heavy, it's bulky. You need something to stop the car. So you need to get brakes, and that's where the adder excels at. But the thing is, with a race car, you don't need brakes. You need speed and acceleration, unless it's a very curvy track. Otherwise, you don't need brakes, you know. So yeah, um, it also has poor wind or wow, poor handling due to its weight. You know, if you were to try and sling that car around the corner, it would just slide because of all the weight. So yeah, um. Moving on to the T20. The 
T20 is probably one of the best cars. I said one of. Not the best. One of the best. I want to make sure you understand that. It's one of the best cars in the game. It's better than the Zentorno. Let me go ahead and say that right now. Um, turning, handling, and acceleration-wise, it excels in. Um, it's speed. It's, eh. it's, I mean, it's up there. It's, like I said, it's one of the fastest cars, but it's not the fastest. Um, in turning, it's it's decent. The one thing I notice is that it kind of understeers if you're going really fast and you slam on the brakes and you start to turn. It understeers for a little bit, especially in the rain. Um, then the inf infamous. Poor everything. <laughs> the car is just crap. Like, yeah, I mean, you see, you're, you're watching gameplay of it right now, and this car, almost in every single corner, it starts spinning its tires and it starts losing control on. It was a chore to keep this car going in a straight line. Um. Like it, ha it has no advantages. The car is just crap. Um. Let's see the Voltic. A great acceleration and speed for its ranking in supers. It's nowhere near among the fastest supercars, but for where it is and its ranking, it's one of the quickest. Like compared to the. Infernus, the Vaca, the um, Cheetah. It's probably one of the fastest among those. But once you get into the uh, the big dogs of the supers like the T20, Adders, and Torno, Turismo, Osiris, it, it just can't keep up. Um, it has the best acceleration coming out of corners. Reason being is because it's an electric car. And the reason being here is this. Since it's electric, you know, you don't have to put your power through the drivetrain and then apply it to the wheels. The power is instantaneous. You press the gas pedal and it goes straight to the wheels. You don't have to go put it through all these bits and pieces. It just goes right to right to the tires and it goes. And I, I don't know how to explain it. I'm not sure. I know it's true. I just don't know how to explain it. So, I mean, if you don't believe me, go look it up. Um, yeah. But it is the best accelerating car in the game. It's... It was absolutely shocking how quick that car would just go into corners, stop, make the turn, and then just exit the corner. It, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, it had decent handling. It's nothing to write home about, but for what it has, it's it's very good. Um, then the cheetah. The cheetah has poor handling. It's definitely better than the Infernus. Definitely better. Um, in fact, I would say it's as good as the Voltic. Um. It also has good steering. When I put it into a corner, it wasn't like I had to start turning very far away from the corner. I could go into the corner, turn almost at the wall, and it would just do it. It would just take the turn. It was great at turning. The Vaca. Poor at everything other than handling. Again, for its ranking, it's decent. It's nowhere near the Voltic. But, yeah. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. If you're going to buy any low grade supercar, avoid. The bullet, avoid the infernus, and avoid 
the vodka. Avoid them like the plague. Those cars are only for show. Seriously. There's a reason why you never see anyone driving them. It's because they suck. You may see a Voltic here and there, but you will almost never see a Vaca unless you have a low-ranking player who doesn't know what he's doing. just likes to look at the car and just wants it for show. Um, if you have a low-grade car, get the Voltic. If you want a high-grade car, I'm about to tell you, it's this is the best super car is seriously it's let me why first off because of its low first off it's so good because of its low center of gravity it is Excuse me. Super and that's advantage. It's also a huge disadvantage. And let me explain why. Now it doesn't happen in this video, but when you're taking the Turismo and let's say on this road there's a pothole, right? You know, the adder or the cheetah or whatever, it just glide right over it. No cares in the world. The turismo, the slightest bump, the slightest you know, pothole in the ground that is that would sink the car's tire into the ground. Just prepare to start flying. Prepare to start spinning out because the turismo has no suspension. It can't take potholes, so you have to avoid them. So you, so yeah, you have to plan for those. You have to watch out. Um, for those things but because of its low center of gravity because it is so low to the ground its weight doesn't really shift so it's able to go around corners not slide you might hear, you might hear the, the wheels chirp as would any car I mean go, you're going basically 50 miles per hour around a sharp turn I mean any car would chirp its tires but the Turismo, like, 9.9 .9 out of 10 times you go around the corner, it will not spin its tires at all. You will enter that corner, you hit the brakes, and it just glides to a stop. I mean, the brakes are efficient, so you're not going to sit there, hold down L2, and nothing's going to happen. You're going to hold down L2. The car is going to stop, and you're going to be able to go around the corner efficiently, but, it's not, but the brakes are not too aggressive. They're not too aggressive, and they're not too passive. They're just right. So you can take corners efficiently, and you can exit corners efficiently um, because of its handling and its speed. Because it's so low to the ground, you can take corners fast, and that's that plays into the Turismo speed. Also, because let me explain to you. First off, the T20 and a Turismo in real life. The Turismo is based on the McLaren F1, and the T20 is based on the McLaren P1. Now, a friend of mine, uh, he told me that the, re that the difference between the P1 and the F1 is this. The F1, I'm going off memory, correct me if I'm wrong, but ha the F1 model has a Formula 1 engine in it. It's not a Formula 1 car, but it has a Formula 1 engine in it. So it automatic. So it already has tons of power. The P1 is just basically a road model, like any any Joe Blow can go and 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 buy this car if you had the money, <laughs> and and it'd just be a road a road car. The F1 is made to race. It is specifically made to race. Um. And they applied this on in GT Online. They put this. They applied this into the game. They made it to where the Turismo is already better than the T20. And I want to go ahead and say something to you. Rockstar said, if you go back and you look at the uh, Rockstar Newswire, they said that the T that the uh, T20 is among the fastest. Never said it's the fastest. 
It's among the fastest. All right. So anyone who went out there and said, oh, well, the 220 is the fastest car in the game. No, it's not. <laughs> it's among the fastest. It never said it's the fastest. And they, they made it sound like it was, but it's not. Um, so, yeah. Also, um, another thing with the Turismo that makes it better is its affordability. Now, let's take into consideration the amount of the T20. Let me back up real quick. The T20, in my opinion, is the second best car in the game. It's the second best. It's not the best, but the second best. Um, anyway, so look at the price of the T20. It's about, going off memory, I think it was like $2,950,000 or something like that. $2 million, or basically $3 million, including upgrades and and uh, customization. So three million, maybe three million two hundred fifty tops. The Turismo is only five hundred thousand dollars when you buy it, and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, including upgrades and customization. Now, look at that. Look at the difference. Two million compared to seven thousand seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. I can probably buy if my math's right. I could probably buy three to four Turismos. For the price of one of those T20s. And I can beat the T20. Um, so yeah. So not only is it good at handling. And speed. And supportability. But it's also good at acceleration. Now I want to go ahead and say this right quick. Let's take a step back. And let's look at the Voltic. This plays into why the Turismo is good at this. At, at acceleration. So, remember what I said about the Voltic. The Voltic was good at, at acceleration because it was an electric car. It didn't have to, you know, use gas. It used primarily electricity. It's a battery-powered car, which gave it the best acceleration. The Turismo uses this. It's a hybrid. Yes, you heard me. The Turismo is a hybrid. <laughs> it, it, is, it is basically the same idea it's basically the same concept as a Prius between you know when, when you're driving slow maybe around 0 to 60 to 70 it's using battery power which is primarily the speed that you're using to go around sharp corners and, and moderate corners so you're using this battery power so this battery power bypasses the drivetrain it bypasses all of this, and it just powers the wheels. So you don't have to worry about the tires spinning. You can just hit the gas, and it goes. Compared to the T20, the T20 does not have this. The T20 is just a basic gas-powered car. The, the Turismo is a hybrid. So, like I said, so low speeds, the Turismo has great acceleration. And then once it hits that gas power, then it has straight-up power. So yeah, I mean, when you're taking a corner in a Turismo, you can hit the brakes, it, it aggressively glides to a stop, or glides, aggressively glides um, to a slow speed, and when you come out of the corner, you don't have to worry about spinning out, mostly, and you don't have to worry about having your wheel spinning, it just goes. And then it switches over from electric to gas, and you can hear it. It's not like they just added it into, like they just said, oh, it's in, it's in the description. It doesn't really apply. No, they applied it. It's really there. <laughs> I mean, you can see it. I mean, take the T20 and then take the T, and then take the Turismo, put it around the same corner, follow the same racing line, and you will see it. The Turismo does not spin its tires while the uh, Turismo, or excuse me, the Turismo does not spin its tires while the T, while the T20 does. And the proof is there. So, it's good at handling, good at speed, it's affordable, it's good at acceleration, low center of gravity, and then it also is very, very, and I mean very, um, light. 
so you don't have a lot of weight to stop. You know, like like the Adder, you know, that car is really heavy, so you have to have very aggressive brakes to stop this big hunk of uh, of car. The Turismo is not like this. It is lightweight. I, I think in the in the description of the car, it says that it's made out of fiberglass. So the car is already lightweight. So it's already hybrid. It's lightweight. Great brakes. Good handling. Great acceleration. Affordable. And then, because it's lightweight, you don't really have to worry about losing control when you stop the car. You don't have to really worry about, you know, basically having to stop the car so much to just take a turn. You can just apex to the corner, going about 100, while everyone else has to go to the corner going 70 or 80. And that's because of also the um, ride height. Now, talking about the ride height, and I forgot to say this again, um, it's ride height makes it to where it has no suspension. So you go over a bump and any other car would recover from it, the T the Turismo can't. So yeah. But anyway, that's the conclusion of this. That's the best car in the game. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Peace.